Welcome to What's on Your Napkin. My name is Jared Gillen, founder of Project 10K, and I'm here with my man, Dan Beck, coming all the way hey. from Salt Lake City. I'm so glad to the studio, man. Thank That's you for awesome. being here. Thank you. So tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, let the audience know, who is Dan Beck? What are you up to in the world when yeah. talk about the show? So I'm a serial, a serial entrepreneur. I started a handful of businesses. Um, most of them have been kind of in the product space. So just recently I started kind of my first um, tech uh, project. So it's FinTech. Um, we do 401ks. I know that sounds super sexy. Everybody <laughs> loves finance. Um, and, and really the goal is to uh, just democratize finance in general um, and, and make it more accessible to people. So I love small business, I love entrepreneurship and, and I'm, I'm excited to be here and hear you know some of these other stories. So what are your thoughts like, because you're, you're in it, right? Yes. Yeah. This, this 401k company originally was on that yeah, concept. Totally. You just executed to yeah. now make it a real FinTech yeah. company. Yeah. But it was on a napkin. Yep. Now we're gonna have entrepreneurs as you know coming to us. I I don't know what their ideas are. Mm -hmm. So you don't know either. So we're in the same position here. Yeah. And they're coming to us with their ideas on a napkin. Mm -hmm. And people always challenge me, they're like, you're going after the riskiest stuff in the world. And I'm like, I don't know if it's risky. Like everything that exists today mm -hmm. was once on a napkin. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. Like Virgin was once on a napkin. Yeah. Like like your idea was yeah. once on a napkin. Yeah. We even had the the um, the agent for Hulk Hogan here. And this no is actually, he was for Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, uh, Magic Johnson, Larry yeah. Bird, the same yeah. agent. And Hulk Hogan started on an app. Like mm -hmm. he literally drew a sketch of what he saw his life becoming. Okay. So everything starts there. So as you're watching, you're going to have entrepreneurs mm -hmm. pitching us their napkin ideas. And what I don't want you to do is say, oh, it's just too early because everything has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. How did you go from napkin to where you are today? There was a lot of research that went into it. And fortunately I'd done this before. Uh, so we kind of knew where to start and a lot of it was under, so I have, I have no background in, in 401k or finance. Yeah, I grew up in a, you know, very kind of blue collar household yeah. um, and just learned that on my, on my own and it kind of became, you know, I was passionate about it. Um, so it was finding thought leaders. We went out and hired a consultant that was in the space to kind of, you know, pick his brain and basically said, Hey, this is our idea. What do you think? And he's like, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> so we're like, great, can we pay you to tell us why? Um, and so that's how, you know, we spent about six months, you know, trying to figure it out just to make sure, you know, before we go down that road, you, you know, it's it's a it's a battle zone. And like yeah. before we got in the trenches, we wanted to make sure is this something we can win. So awesome. just just doing a ton of learning. Um, Google, you know, yeah, being yeah. curious and, and one thing leads to another and it, you know, and pretty soon we said, Hey, yeah, we can do this. That's awesome. And really yeah. committing to yep. right? Like yep. going all in. And that's really what we're looking for tonight. Is we're looking for entrepreneurs that are committed to solving the problem they're going to share with us. And there's four major criteria that we always talk about. The first criteria is we're looking for the right person or the right people if there's more than one. The second is the right idea. The third is the right market. And then the fourth is the right business model. And as you're watching with us tonight, do us a favor, share in the comments below. If you stand for one of these ideas, you're like, oh my goodness, they need to move forward. This is one of the 10,000 companies at Project 10K, then please share in the comments below and tell us why. In addition, if you stand against any of these ideas, politely, because these are people's dreams, let us know why. Let us know what about it isn't sitting well for you. So with that, let's invite the first entrepreneur to share what's on your napkin. Please join us. All right, what is your name and where are you calling from? Ryan Donatelli from Las Vegas, Nevada. Awesome, well thank you for being here all the way from Las Vegas. Um, you got five minutes, please share that big idea. We can't wait to hear it. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I cannot be wait to sit in that seat next to you, Jared. Awesome, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. That's okay. okay. Please do. So I am Ryan Donatelli with Complete Activation, and Complete Activation is a 360-degree business software solution built for activation and staffing agencies. Our goal is to onboard all the concert companies such as Live Nation, Insomniac, AEG, and PSG, plus a verified list of over 200 activation agencies and grow to 3 million ARR in year one. Um, we'd like to expand, expand, scale, and market the software solution platform with the intention to sell in five years. Brands struggle to manage all their moving parts and businesses, including all coordinating talent as well as management, from onboarding to human resources, training, and 1099 compliant booking functions. Complete Activation software handles all the aspects, booking and event recapping with full transparency amongst clients, team, and payroll. I know you've seen several of these platforms um, recently. I've been watching the footage, and the one thing that Complete Activation does that separates us from everyone else is 
everything is included. So there has been some other that have gone to market and they just are always missing one element. So complete activation is fully customizable. Um, it's a SaaS solution built for activation and staffing agencies to streamline your workflow, lower your business overhead, and ultimately increase profit. Uh, it repeats or it reduces redundancy across multiple programs, and it just streamlines everything to make it very easy for the user, uh, which has been, I mean, it, it's been phenomenal for me um, as a business owner. So I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But it's an easy to use software with other items in the marketplace to really customize this for your business and your brand. Why am I the right person to bring this idea to the world? I have an agency that is 20 years old. I built this for myself. And over the last two decades, I have watched several companies come and go, and they're just missing the mark and what is needed to make this a big success. Um, I'm the first customer on my own software. And when I took this, my last big leap in this software, I replaced six internal positions in my company. In this event activation world, that is a big deal. That is a lot of moving parts and it streamlines everything and provides complete transparency for all clients involved, all the staff, and it stays 1099 compliant, which is probably the biggest um, success. So this white label SaaS platform has different levels of packages. Uh, we plan to launch with three levels, including 25 users and access to the marketplace. Each package does have package only items and then other package, um, then there's the marketplace for other add-ons. So we plan to have 20% of tenants on level one, 50% of tenants on level two package and 25% of tenants on level three. Um, annual fee with um, reoccurring credit card billing and then um, you can upgrade at any time. So we plan to launch to the verified list of 200 agencies um, that do not currently have a software solution platform. Also um, utilize my network and pitch to Live Nation and the other comparable companies for contracts. We plan to run new audience conversions after the fact, run LinkedIn, lead gen ads, uh, complete social media engagement, email marketing, YouTube content, et cetera. So why I'm the perfect partner for you, I am a member of the 10X Accelerator program. I'm signed up for three other um, 10X programs in the next 45 days. Uh, my business vision is in alignment with all the 10X principles and business strategies. I have a bulletproof concept and a proven track record. And my company is well established. Like I said, we're 20 years old as of February of this year. I have a web presence. I'm fully trademarked. Complete activation success is inevitable when partnered with the right development team to offer strategic marketplace positioning. Our collaboration on this build to sell software product will skyrocket complete activation success in the marketplace. I am a completely self-funded. I did not finish college either. I know you hear a lot of that. I'm just a serial entrepreneur. I have several other businesses. And basically this came about because I saw room for improvement, which is how I started my own agency. Um, the software came about when I decided to lean on technology in every place possible. Um, technology is an amazing tool and it makes everything limitless. So after I started my own agency, a couple of years in, I started building this software for myself. And I decided that if this can help me, then it can definitely help other agency owners. So I have replaced, like I said, six internal positions with my agency. It operates seamlessly with under five people and over a million dollars in business and revenue a year on the agency side. And there's only room for improvement to go when uh, we take this and let this be a white label SaaS platform. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation. You can stop sharing your screen now. Um, I love industry technology. Oh, yeah. It's something that I always look for, and uh, especially from industry people that have been in the industry for 20 years. So kudos to you for not just looking at the industry and saying, okay, it just is what it is, and really committing to bring innovation to it. So questions now. Um, where are you in the process? How much of this is built? If anything, do you have it wireframed out? Are you really clear on all of the features? So you've written out some type of technical documentation. Do you have none of that? Just let us know where are you at the process right now? Absolutely. So like I said, I've been using this platform for myself for over 10 years. 
So I have a fully functioning platform. It's not a SaaS platform. It's not there. It's straight code. We started back in the day with Flash, if you can believe that, on the front end. And so the back end is um, PHP code and completely needs rebuild. I have all functions, um, all marketplace items, all pricing. I hired a SaaS um, pricing expert, uh, Marcos Rivera, and I have been working with him on the pricing front. I hired a SaaS specific lawyer for all of our documents um, and all of our privacy policy and everything there. Um, like I said, we're fully trademarked, and the only thing I need is the partnership on the development team. I have been through the ringer with developers and just received a full refund on my last dev team for a project that they just could not complete. Yes, yes, we understand. Unfortunately, that so is- I have all my flow charts as well. So, I mean, this thing is, and we have something to reference, obviously, with the existing platform. So when did you start working with that dev shop that didn't work? Like when, when was the commitment to turn this into a SaaS product and bring it to the industry? Because obviously there are, there are industries where people like you will build tech for their own use so they can scale their business, but they don't go and SaaS it up the way that you now want to. So I really commend you for that. When did that shift take place? We were like, it's enough of just us using it. We want to now turn this into a platform with three tiers and then sell it into the market. When did that shift happen? Uh, that happened a couple of years ago. Okay. So, so it's not my first development team I've been trying to work with. The last development team, I, I mean, I know you hear this all the time, but it was a four month project, a 40 grand commitment. And 13 months later, I'm getting a full refund. Got it. Good for you for getting the refund. Um, with regard to the marketplace, um, the the apps, we'll call them in the marketplace. So that's how I understand it. There's different tiers and you could add on the different features slash apps that you're going to need in order to have the perfect solution for that business. Are you planning on building all of those or is this going to be a marketplace like the Salesforce ecosystem where other app developers are building features that live on top of the platform? So what's your vision for the marketplace? No, our marketplace are other additional items that certain agencies may use and may not use. So it is a complete full I mean, I, I use the entire thing, but not everybody will want to, but I would rather have less employees and be out in the field with my team. And I can't do that if I am pushing paper, making phone calls. So they are not APIs. This is a full on just documents and ways of working that have worked for me and my business. Cool. What do you got? I love that you like identified a specific customer. I'm, I'm curious why Live Nation and do you know what they're currently doing right now for, the, for their solution? Are you replacing two or three systems? Is this something entirely new they layer on top of what they already have? Um, the system that they are using is not, yes, I do know what they're using. I know what all of them are using. And the 200 lists of verified people is um, that is active post COVID of 200 agencies that do not have it. So this is, four major concert companies and 200 activation agencies that just I've done my research on with my team to find that are currently not, I mean, Google is is where they're at. I'm not trying to put out Google. I'm just trying to streamline things and make it very transparent. And it's more about how the software is used. It's not what it is, but how I've utilized it to lean on my business. It's been phenomenal. And what are you thinking around the pricing? I know there's the three tiers. And where, where do you think you're going to land on the different tiers? From a, from a, uh, basic is 497 tours is 997 and agency is 1697 a month. Cool. Is there, would there be a scenario where one end user needs multiple licenses or they're just going to need one license to, to run? Whatever they're going to need to run. Live Nation can use the tour package, which is the 1697. They will have to add on users because every package comes with 25 users. So they will have to add on users. But the great part about it is, is you pay for what you're using, which is nice. So you pick the package that's right for you. If you want the basic package and pick 16 marketplace items, you totally can. That'd be a unique scenario. But again, Whatever works for whatever, and we are right? the decision makers at Live Nation. So we're the decision makers at Live Nation. Pitch us right now in 60 seconds as to why we should even entertain this conversation. As a way to streamline your entire tour staff, um, have backup tour staff at the tip of your fingers, as well as lower your overhead, provide transparency, and increase your profit. Cool. Any other questions? Um, 
No, I think that's, uh, well, I, 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 have you done research to see how big the, the total market is? Um, ideas are great, but I always want to know, like, what's the top end of that idea? Um, so there's special groups online and um, you could be, we could expand this in two different ways. We can expand this with the user base. Um, if I have the right dev team, we could provide transparency across all the businesses that they're with that utilize this. Um, if that could be possible. But another world I live in uh, is the spirits and wine world. And leaning on the suppliers to utilize this platform solely for training purposes. I have videos and tests on all the brands that we work with within my um, platform. And that is a, a huge asset to brands like Constellation Brands, Gallo, all these big players, believe it or not, they do not have a streamlined platform where all their trainings exist for their outside contractors that are hired under their brands. Got it. Yeah, cool. I'm interested to hear that too, because you, when you were saying there's these four, like like um, Live Nation, and then there's 200, like if that's the market, it's not a huge market, especially yeah, no. with this, like we're looking at like, 50 grand a month, maybe. Um, and, and, and no, no, believe it or not, that small market takes us over 3 million in year one. Okay. Assuming you get all of it, right? Assuming that we get get all of it, which that's hard to do in the first year. But but I, I see where you're coming from. There are other use cases for the platform as well. Let's see what our audience thinks. So what are your thoughts? Should we move forward into due diligence with this wonderful entrepreneur? Before we allow the audience to influence us, any feedback on the pitch? Anything in particular that really stood out? It allowed you to see the, the confidence that was yeah. present. What are some of the feedback on the pitch that you, you see? It's definitely well researched, and and you know having that background in the industry is hugely valuable. Yeah. Um, and I think more than anything, when you know when when somebody's being pitched, it's about the money. Like I need to understand like what how big is the opportunity? Yeah. Um, and what is it going to take? So knowing that it's three million in the first year, that's awesome. How much are we going to spend to get to that point? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's the economic viability. Like there's a lot of great ideas, but they don't ever make it to market just because there's you know the economics haven't been thought out. Yeah, and I, and that would be an area too that I would encourage you when you're pitching is to show a bigger like addressable market than just the the two hundred that you did your research on. Cause that's not a very large market. It might get us to $3 million, but with SaaS, like yeah. we went into $300 million. Like how do we get there? Eventually $3 billion. Like how do we get to that volume? And then you brought up out of nowhere at the end, just cause, cause you asked the great question, the wine and spirits, which I was not even thinking as a use case whatsoever. So speaking into the versatility of the tech, is very supportive because we aren't industry people. Like we don't know the industry. So we're not seeing that. Yeah. You are because you're in it. That would help us. I'm a yes to move forward to due diligence with you. I'm really impressed with you. So I, I love industry technology. I love when people are in the industry and they see inefficiency and they don't just solve it for themselves. They really want to solve it for the industry. So I always stand for that. We have a ton of confidence as well. So in due diligence, we're just gonna go deeper into all of this. We're gonna really want to understand what is this minimum viable product? Because the one thing I heard that didn't really add up was you had this other software development firm that you paid 40 grand to for a four month engagement, which is really very little. Um, and they were giving you a refund, which, which is awesome. But this is a product jack that you've been building for over 10 years. So I'm like, how in four months and 40 grand can they build a SaaS version of what you've been building over 10 years? So I really want to understand like, what is the minimum viable product? Like what feature set could we launch with that would get the attention of Live Nation really quickly so we can start generating cash flow attraction. But that's the kind of stuff we'll share during, during due diligence. Can't wait to see you again. You did an awesome job and appreciate you for pitching on the show. Blueprint it is the place where you can go in and put those steps in there and then be able to impact the world and monetize on that by having a marketplace in the community that we're developing for you in Blueprint. It. So we've created the app for any expert to be able to come in and put their steps, their exact steps to success in our app and put it on a marketplace where people can go and buy their steps to any success. So there you have it. What's on your app? What are your thoughts? You saw a launch for a pitch, yeah. industry person mm -hmm. that has 20 years of experience. Yeah built her own version of the tech mm -hmm. that she's been using. And yeah. then one day, three years ago, she's like, it's time. 
Yeah. I want to sass this thing up. I want to bring it to the market. Now that it's just you and I talking, mm-hmm. were you a little concerned about the size of the market? Because I know I was. Yeah. You, you asked a great question. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I do also like, because a lot of times people come out with an idea and they're like, we can do this and we can do this and we can do this and there's no focus. Yeah. And so I like that there was focus on kind of a very, I'd say fairly narrow vertical. Yeah. But then obviously the HR space, onboarding, um, 1099 contractors or whatever, um, you know, th- th- there's a massive workforce. Yeah. So going into additional industry verticals obviously expands that market. So that's where I would want to know more is yeah. really what's the what's the addressable market. Yeah, we're going to go into that. Part of what we do in due diligence is we want the addressable market. We really want to understand that kind of like model. Are they willing to spend that kind of money? Yeah. Like obviously for a live nation, it's nothing. But for some of these others, mm-hmm. maybe it's a huge number. Maybe they're still okay doing it with pen and paper. Like, we often hear that. It's yeah. like we go into industry. We're like, well, how are you doing it now? They're like, well, pen and paper. Mm-hmm. Or like, well, what about if you spent 29 bucks and you could automate everything? No, 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 do it pen and yeah, paper. Yeah. It's like, are you sure you're doing pen and paper? Like, I got a solution. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's it, what that's a lot of time. Like, I got a solution, we're profitable. Yes, I don't, don't yeah. want to change anything. And part of it too is like, how many new people are going to be entering that industry? So yeah. we're building this really cool tech product now. It's called Claim Gear, but it launches may or may launch actually already. Um, we did beta launching, but it um, it is a platform for public adjusters. So I okay. actually even know what a public adjuster was. I don't. I, yeah, I, I didn't know what it was until I moved to Florida. So public adjusters go to homes when they experience hurricanes or fires and they do an assessment and they're the ones going to the insurance company on your behalf Mm -hmm. to get as much claims as possible. And uh, and there's a huge industry in in places where there's natural disaster. So Josh Osteen's our co-founder. He's an industry man. And in the industry, there was one other player, mm-hmm. one other player. So hasn't had a lot of innovation left for 30 years. Like yeah. it's like the player. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, just, it's so wonky. It makes yeah. no sense. There's no workflow. The user interface is terrible. And all these things are missing that we need. And what's happening is our industry is going to salesforce.com to use Salesforce, but that's not built for them. Yeah. So like they're duct taping this thing together. And I know what needs to get built. He's one of our co-founders. It's probably the biggest thing that we've built. Mm-hmm. We usually try to, to build scale and, and launch these companies in, I don't know, 90 to 120 days. We're in about 18 months now. Mm-hmm. Because it's such a big scale project. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and we've released the beta version, but we'll have other versions coming soon. But this is the disruption for the industry because mm-hmm. it's taking into consideration everything that original companies stopped yeah. considering because yeah. they didn't need to. Yeah. But then at the same time, we have to now convince industry people to leave what they've been using for years yeah. to come to this platform. He's done a great job in pre-launch That's to awesome. start just educating people on why this platform is better. So these are the kind of things that we look for in due diligence. Like what has happened to start building traction towards that big moment? I want to thank you for being here. Yeah, this insight is yes. awesome. Hey. You're going to be on NASDAQ with us too. So make sure you check yeah. out this NASDAQ episode. You're going to learn a ton about this extraordinary serial entrepreneur that is now in fintech making a massive impact by democratizing finance. You'll learn more about that on NASDAQ. All right, we appreciate you. And listen, get off the fence. If you have an idea, head over right now. Pitch10k.com, fill out the application. We want to get you on the show so maybe you can be part of what we're building here, where we build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies over the next 10 years. All right, bye for now.